Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Okay, I've been asked to, to come here and give you not my, uh, my take on what happened from my journey before as a Muslim, and then finding out about Islam, and then my journey as a Muslim. Okay, so I think I'd start back way back when I was around 11, 12 years old, and I used to go to a boys' brigade with my, my cousin, Simeon Brown, who you all know very well, and my other cousin and my, my friends and my family who lived in the area in London. And um, that's where I first learned about, uh, you know, I was a Christian, sorry, I didn't tell you that. I was a Christian and that's when I learned about God and, you know, all the prophets and the stories that we all come to know already. But, um, I was a little bit confused because when I went to church, I didn't really understand much. There wasn't really much that I could understand in terms of when they would talk about Jesus السلام, and a, a few things just made me think I don't understand and I think I lost a lot of interest in um, wanting to learn but I liked to, to play the games when I was you know at Boys Brigade we used to play a lot of games football outside we used to play indoor football we used to play athletics every type of sport so all the youngsters in the, the community we were we were always playing games and we were happy to go but we, one of the stipulations where we had to come to Sunday school so um, I, obviously I went and um, so I was a Christian, I was brought up as a Christian from a Christian family and um, I lived my life, I felt like I did all of the things that I, I lived my life in a way where I treated others the way I wanted to be treated and I felt like I was you know, as honest as I could be I wasn't a person who tried to go out there and you know, lie to people or cheat people. So I felt as long as you was a good person and you believed in God, then you'll be okay in life. Um, so I carried on my life living this way. And then obviously I went down the, the, the road of becoming a football player. You know, I worked hard um, with the ability that Allah gave me. And um, you know, I became a professional footballer at the age of 17. Where I left my, my home in London and I went to live in Bristol um, on my own for the first time I ever thought about leaving home was when I, I got an offer from Bristol Rovers and I started my journey there as a professional football player and living my life exactly the same way again you know trying to be as good a person as I can be and not really caring too much about anything else because I didn't know I just didn't know and um, it wasn't until I, I moved to Wigan Athletic at the time, there was in Division 2. It was called Division 2, it's League 1 um, equivalent at the moment. And I started you know, doing really well at the club. And we went through from League 1, well, Division 2 to the Championship. And then we went to the Premiership. And the year we went to the Premiership, um, actually just before that, sorry, my brother actually became a Muslim. And I heard that he became a Muslim. He used to, we used to all live in London together, but he moved to Bradford, back to Bradford where I was born. And I just heard stories that he was a Muslim. So I was like, okay, next time I meet him, I want to speak to him and see what, you know, what, what it's all about. And when I did speak with him, he would say small things that I would, you know, would really intrigue me while I was, you know, I, at the time I was a professional footballer at Wigan. And I'd go and visit him and he would say things that would intrigue me, but after I'd leave him, I would no longer think about God anymore, I would just carry on my life. So I would just enjoy you know, doing the things that most of us do that we, when we don't know about Allah. And it wasn't until I met um, my wife, my wife now, she, was, she came from a Muslim family, and, um, but she wasn't practicing at the time. So when we, we, we got speaking, we came across the subject of Islam and I said I was a Christian and she said okay but what do you believe about Jesus and I was like well I don't believe he's God but everything else you know I, I believe he existed and all of that but she said okay but if you don't believe that then you can't be a Christian so I was like oh yeah you're right so we got in a conversation, I said, you know, my brother's a Muslim and a lot of the things he says makes a lot of sense and um, it sounds very easy and very simple. And that's when I started really thinking about 
you know, religion. Because things got a little bit serious with this girl, and then um, we thought, okay, she said she could never be um, um, together with a person who's not Muslim. She knew that, you know, so she knew, okay, I need to go and learn about Islam and about Christianity to see whether religion is, is real. I wanted to check for myself because I thought, you know, I'm not going to become a Muslim just for somebody else. I want to make sure that it's a religion that I actually believe in fully. So I decided to go on a journey online on my own and trying to figure out what's right from wrong at the age of 23. And I thought, okay, I didn't have no guidelines of how to work this out, but I decided I'll go online and I'll see what I can find. And what I did is I went on a Christian website, I started reading, reading a bit. And then I thought, okay, this sounds, this sounds good, makes sense. And then I went on an Islamic website, I just typed in Google Islam. And then I read about the first website that came up, I started reading about it. And I thought, okay, well, this sounds just as good. They both sound the same, they both look the same. So I was thinking, okay, one day I'm leaning towards Christianity, the next day I'm leaning towards Islam. Because, you know, I was told that they're very similar, but I couldn't find where the, where the differences were. And then I, I sat down and I thought, okay, how am I going to work this out? And I thought, okay, the sources. Let me look into the Bible. Where, was the, where did the Bible come from? So when I looked into that, you know, I found out there's 66 different authors over so many different years. There was um, books with different amounts of chapters in, some with more chapters, some with less, so many different versions. So for me, I felt like there was nothing that's agreeable. What is the Bible in the first place? So how am I going to know which one to choose to actually look at and see whether it was correct for me? And um, then I thought, okay, let me see what's the correct, what's, what, what's, what is said about the Quran. And um, I started reading and I found that there was only one version and it was only in one language and it's never changed since the day, you know, it was revealed. I thought, okay, well, this one seems much more, you know, trustworthy, something that you can go by, but that doesn't make it the truth. You know, just because it's never changed, it doesn't mean it's the truth. So I thought, okay, I have to now read into these books. And what I realized about, first of all, it was um, in, the, in the Bible, I found that there was contradictions. So we believe that, you know, as Christians, they believe that, you know, Jesus is God. And then he is also God's son. And then, you know, it's, it didn't make sense. You can't be the two, two opposites. So I thought, okay, that doesn't make much sense to me. I can't really believe that. And that is one of the things you have to believe. It's, it's a core fundamental to believe in, to be a Christian. So I couldn't believe that. But when I went in and read about what the, is inside the Quran, I, I typed in YouTube, Quran miracles. And I saw a scientist talking about, you know, the, the embryo, you know, the, the, when um, the child is formed, the stages it goes through. And I realized that who could have known this apart from the person who made us? Because this is unseen to us. We can't see this. So that was one, one sign that I realized, okay, could it come from humans? No, because we didn't know that 1400 years ago, 1400 plus years ago, we didn't know that. So that's not possible it could come from humans. So then looked into a bit more and then they're talking about inside uh, about um, previously we thought that the world was flat. And then obviously as a nation we thought that the world was flat. Then we came to find out that it wasn't flat. So then the Quran all along, all along gave descriptions of it not being flat. But not only that but there's, there's parts in the Quran where it's saying we're walking in the earth. Obviously, we know what, what the earth is. And then it's and they're talking about us walking on the earth. So that is a, somebody talking with real knowledge of what the, you know, the shape of the earth is and where we are in the earth. So I thought, okay, only the Creator could have known where that, you know, that information. And they're not pointing it out. It's just normal talk, as if you know, like us talking today to a person 1,400 years ago they would think, what are we talking about? So I felt exactly the same way, although we're just talking normally. So there was one sign on top of another sign on top of another sign. 
I started realizing, okay, there's no way this can come from anywhere other than the one who made me. So, but I still, in my head, that didn't, that wasn't clear to me at the time. So what I did is I found, I went on both um, the, correct, the, the Islamic website and the Christian website. And I read about all of the things that you need to believe to become a Christian and all of the things that you need to believe to become a Muslim. And when I read through the, the stuff that you need to believe to be a Christian, obviously I couldn't believe every single thing that was, was there. So I thought, okay, let me read about the, um, what you need to believe as a Muslim. So then, as each one I read, okay, you need to believe in Allah, you need to believe in the angels, the prophets, you know, all of the things that it said, you know, I could believe it, every single thing. And, I, and then at the end, it actually said, if you believe in all of these things, then you're already a Muslim. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> so it says, you just need to declare these words with your mouth and say that you're a Muslim. Testify that you, you, know, you believe in Allah and all of these things and that the Prophet is the last Prophet. So I said, okay, I can say that. If I believe it, I say it. That makes me Muslim. So I said it, but that was the time when I just became a Muslim, but I just thought the same way as I was when I was a Christian. But I just now believe a different set of rules. Now I can live my life just like I was, doing whatever I want. The rules don't really matter so much. But I'm now Muslim. If someone asks me, what are you? I'm just going to say I'm a Muslim. But I don't, I would, I would, at the time, I obviously don't pray. I don't know, the, uh, I'm not following any rules. I just thought again, that if you're good and you believe in Allah now and the Prophet Sallallahu that you're okay and you're gonna go to paradise at the end anyway. So it wasn't until um, my cousin from Bradford, he, I went to his house, I spoke with him and he said, I'm going to take you to a friend of mine in Keefley. I'm not sure if you guys know um, Taj from Keefley, but a friend of mine, um, he took me to his brother called Taj's house. And um, we sat down and he fed me small pieces, small pieces bit by bit, he fed me food, yeah, <laughs> but he fed me, <laughs> he fed me um, small pieces of Islam, but he always referred to the Quran and the Sunnah whenever he said anything about the religion, and he just gave, he knew what to say to me, like whenever I make, uh, spoke about some, a subject, he'd always relay it back to the Quran and the Sunnah, so I started feeling like a thirst for all of this information, like, okay, there's more of this, okay, I need to hear more. And um, I really did love the food, okay. Um, it was funny because when I left that, that first time I met him, my cousin brought me there. And I actually lived in um, West, Brom, West Brom at the time. This is in Birmingham. So I drove back to Birmingham and then I decided to call him and go back and meet him without my cousin, like a, a few days after. So it was that much of an effect it had on me that I actually went back on my own and I started, I sat down on the sofa and he would tell me more and tell me more. It wasn't just like a lesson, it was just like coming to see him. But then he'd always say a few things. And then it was just, I was, I was hooked on learning more and more about something I never knew for 23 years of my life. I thought, wait a minute, how comes Islam was here from when I was born and I only know now? I'm 23 years old, what happened? Who were all the Muslims that I came across in my life? So I started thinking back in my head, like, surely there was people I went to school with that were Muslims. Why did they not tell me about Islam? How comes? I must have had friends somewhere. So then I spoke to a friend of mine and he said, yeah, I'm Muslim. I was like, so why didn't you tell me? All these years went by and you didn't tell me why. So I can't remember his answer, but it was one of them things I started thinking like, this is a treasure, this is something that everyone must know, everyone must know this. So I went and I got all the materials from, from Taj, every day I would drive, I used to drive, I actually lived in Manchester and Birmingham, so when I used to play for West Bromwich Albion, I used to drive one hour and a half to training and one hour and a half back after training. So I had a lot of time and at this time I had a, a DVD player in my car in the, in the um, what's the, the thing that covers the, the sun, sun visor, that's it, yeah. So I had a, a TV and a sun visor. So I used to watch all of the, the, the videos and DVDs he gave me all the way there and all the way back. Good job I didn't crash, but 
I don't really watch, I just hear, I listen. And the more and more I learned, you know, I, I had many Zakir Naik DVDs and uh, many Ahmed Dida. So it was all to do with, um, most of it was to do with the similarities and, and, and you know, the cross-checking between all the religions. And that's where it all became really clear to me, you know, like, okay, so this is where the differences are. So now I wanted to tell everybody, I was just like, okay, Islam is for everybody. It's not just for me. It's not something just for me. I have to tell everyone. So that's when I went on a mission, a Dawah mission, to just speak to everybody. You know, I spoke to my mum, and she became a Muslim. Um, I spoke to my cousin, Simeon Brown, who you all know here. And um, he, I actually said to him, you know what, you need to come with me to see this, this, this brother. He goes, I'm not going to be ignorant. Uh, but I, to be honest, at first I'm going to tell you a little story. <laughs> I said to him, you need to become Muslim. He goes, I don't want to be Pakistani. <laughs> he thought Islam was Pakistani. So I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm a black man. I don't want to be Pakistani, I'm black. So I was like, look, it's not where you're from, it's a religion. I said, look, you know me, me and you, we used to be together all the time, we used to do everything together. We're similar people in our mind and how we think. Now you need to come with me and see this brother in Keefley. He said, I'm not ignorant, I'll come and see. So he came, he came over and he sat very quietly when we were talking, Taj was talking to him. And I thought, he's not listening. He's not listening at all. And at the end of the night, Taj gave him a Quran and told him to go home and read it. And a couple of weeks later, he said, Naif, he rang me and said, Naif, I'm scared. I need to become Muslim. I need to become Muslim because I could die today. And I'm not Muslim. So we went back to his house. He took Shahada, Alhamdulillah. You know, he's, he's here today. But um, another thing was, we, we, we then decided to speak to, speak to his brother. Uh, his brother was um, a Christian as well in London. We also brought him up <coughs> to see Taj. And um, he, I remember we were talking to him and, we, and then we was, we was hoping that he was going to take Shahad. And, he, and he, he said one thing that really sticks out. He said, I feel like I'm jumping into the deep end. And Taj goes, no brother, you're jumping out of the deep end. <laughs> so that was a great um, story because he became Muslim and he's not looked back either. But another great story is um, something that I didn't, um, I always seen on YouTube and I thought they may be made up stories, you know, you hear these stories here and there. But what it was, was when I became Muslim, um, my auntie, who was Simeon's mum, she became a bit scared and she spoke to my mum and said, look, Nathan's become Muslim. You know, aren't you scared? Because this was at the time when, you know, 9-11 happened and we had a, a little bit of a bad name, obviously. So she said, no, I'm not, I'm not upset. My mum said, no, I'm not scared. You know, he, he's found something, he's happy. You know, I just let him be. And then when she got wind that Simeon became Muslim, she said, oh my gosh, I need to find out about this religion to get him away from it. Little did, you know, after learning, you know what happened. <laughs> she became a Muslim. You know, she said, Alhamdulillah, I found what I've been looking for, the, you know, all of my life. So, you know, but I just got news of this, that she became Muslim. I was like, how did this happen? I didn't speak to her yet. So he said, you know, call her and find out. So that's when I found out the story. So then I thought, okay, now it's a real story for my own family that I can go out and tell people what really happened. And um, a few of my friends also, they became Muslim. Uh, one of my closest friends from when I was like four years old, I used, he's a, a devout Christian, you know, um, Jehovah's Witness. So every time we spoke, we spoke for about a year, um, about a year, every day, speaking about the differences. Because now I had every single thing that Zakir Naik said, every single thing in my mind, I had it like exactly how he says, <laughs> I, would, I would quote it. So I remember there was times I would quote so much, he would be sitting there quiet, not saying anything, because he knew that he couldn't say anything to actually, you know, defend it. But he knew it was right. So I said, okay, you know when you go home and you're, you're at, on your own, you know the truth, what's right and wrong. So even though you're trying to defend something and you have no answers, you know what the truth is. And um, it wasn't until 
Ramadan came, okay, Ramadan came and he was actually fasting in Ramadan, the whole of Ramadan, but he hadn't become a Muslim yet. So it was funny. I said, you're fasting, but you're not, you haven't said Shahada yet. So you're just quiet again, quiet. And at the end of the, the, the month, he actually said his Shahada after his, um, after his fasting. So he is the one that took the longest time, but you know, Alhamdulillah, he became Muslim. And now he's in, um, I think he basically he runs the maj a masjid in London. So he's there, he opens the masjid. He's there all, all the time for all the prayers. So he, you know, he's, he's made obviously the masjid, the place where, you know, he, he lives basically. So Alhamdulillah, he's another person who became a Muslim. And um, even my strike partner, he became a Muslim, Jason Roberts. And, um, but it was difficult to stay close to him and teach him at the start. So unfortunately, he um, decided to, um, you know, carry on his, his life um, before he became a Muslim. Um, but, you know, inshallah, in the future, if you can make du'a for him to obviously think about what, why he came into it and, and inshallah, see it again and decide to become a Muslim in, in future. Um, so, um, anyway, this, this became a, a time where I started learning more and more about Islam. And when I became a Muslim, that was the time at my peak of my career. A lot of people ask me, why did you become a Muslim? You know, were you down? Was something bad happening to you so you decided to turn to God? I said, no, I was at the best time in my life. I just got to the premiership, top scorer in the championship. You know, the, you know, the world was my oyster with, when it came to football. So. That was a time, and I had actually experienced a, 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 like this. My career was straight up. And there was no sideways and downwards movements. It was straight up. I was going straight up from the minute I became a football player. That's all I experienced, you know. So I became a Muslim. And like I said, I became really excited when I heard of this information. So I wanted to tell people about it. And I... You know, I was one of the first people to be basically out there with my religion. So I had my beard, I grew it, it was bigger than this as well, it was coming out of the sides a bit more. And, um, but I was still playing football, I didn't get an injury or anything like that. But then I heard stories, you know, small stories from here and there saying, ah, oh, he's now praying in the corner, in training, when I never did, you know. And then they'd have people who would say, you know, he's now only interested in his religion, he's no longer interested in football. And it really did um, affect my career in, in them years. But, you know, I realized one thing that Islam is, you know, much better than having a football career, you know. Islam is the best thing that ever happened to me. So for me, I didn't care what happened. I was going to carry on with my Islam and whatever comes my way comes, you know. Alhamdulillah for, for whatever happens. Um, I found myself not playing as much as regularly and it was difficult, it was hard, but I just learned more and learned more and had patience, you know, you, you have to have patience and you keep working hard. Allah doesn't say to, to stop working hard and striving for what you want to get, but if it doesn't come then Alhamdulillah. So for me, throughout the last, I don't know how many years of my career, I wasn't playing as regularly. Then I got into the vicious circle of not being match fit and then what that means is you come on the field for 30, 40 minutes and you'd get tired. Then I come off and then he doesn't play me, the manager wouldn't play me the next game. So then I'd be up not, on, not playing for a few games, play really well in training and in reserve games. Then you put me back in for a real game, but I can't make 90 minutes. So I was in the circle of, I'd play for a little amount of time, very, very good, but I'd get tired. And then he'd not give me that chance to ever get match fit again. So every club I moved to, the same kind of thing happened from then on. Didn't have any injuries, there's no change to me apart from I was a Muslim. And I became obviously out there a little bit more with my religion. I was, you know, I used to ask for halal food at training. I used to obviously need a room to pray in whenever the time was to pray. So I was a little bit different. I didn't go out with the, the players, you know, if they ever went out anywhere. And um, so all of them things, I kind of was a little bit different from the group. And in football, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's not just about because it's Muslim, it's because you're different from the group, okay? So, I wouldn't say the, you know, the, the players were like against Islam or anything, because they wasn't. It was just, some managers were, I would tell you some managers were, but 
all in all, they, when I used to tell them about Islam, they would love it, you know, they would like it and they would be like, wow, okay, so it's as simple as that. You know, a lot of people I'd speak to and, and I'd make them realize the misconceptions that they had in their life uh, about Islam, that, um, and I put it straight for them. But <clears throat> what I found was that I was playing less and less, and obviously when the Ramadan time came around, it was very difficult to play because they knew that I wasn't eating or I wasn't drinking. So um, I remember I had um, a conversation with my manager. He didn't know I was fasting for the first, I don't know, half of, the, of Ramadan. So he didn't know any difference whatsoever. But when he heard that I wasn't drinking or eating, he says, are you fasting? I said, yeah. He says, okay, you're not playing then. And I thought it was, it was joking. So I started having a little giggle. But his face was serious. So I was like, okay. He's actually not going to play me. So I just carried on fasting. And then I had a serious conversation with him. I said, you know, I'm playing the same. Like, even when I was in Greece, I played. And people said, can you fast all year round? Because I was playing so good during that time. And that was 35 degrees, 40 degrees. So I remember the player saying that. So that's one person when they're not, they don't mind about Islam. And then there's the other person who believes if you're not eating and drinking, you're never going to be able to play. Okay, but there's so many other football players in the Premiership, they're playing, they're fasting and they're doing well. So why would you just, you know, discriminate against me because I need to do something in my religion? They said, look, I don't believe that you have the energy, you will have the energy to play. I said, okay, well, you didn't know, you didn't know. I had a little bit of an argument with him, but it didn't change anything. He said, look, we just agreed to disagree. I don't believe that I can, it affects my, 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 um, my judgment, my, my picking the team, it affects um, who I pick when I know that you're not drinking and you're not eating. But, um, so this happened for a few years and to be honest it became difficult to play. And then imagine, I'm not playing much but I'm the same player. I know what I can do in training, my, my agent would come and watch me and he'd be amazed at what I'm doing. But the whole outside world, they don't know what I'm like anymore because for a year, two years, I'm no longer playing and you don't see my name in the, in the newspaper anymore. Everyone's like, what happened to Nathan? So this is what I get, this is what I was getting. But on the other hand, Islam was always there and I was always happy that, you know, that is in my life. So no matter what happens, the real treasure and the real success is Islam. So that's what I knew. So now I've come to the time where it got to a stage where, you know, the only teams that were interested were the teams, you know, a few leagues lower. And it was much more, it was difficult then because I had a lifestyle where I, I, I looked after my family and I was able to, to live on the money I had. So now getting offers at a lower rate and then playing with lesser ability players, it became something very, very difficult for me to be able to do and to be able to sustain my family's life, you know, life. So I decided to try and go abroad to Thailand, which was last year, January. And I went over there, I, I found that the level was really, really low, and, but the money was really high. So it was like, okay, we could maybe prolong my career over there for a little while. And there was a nice Muslim community. There's, there's quite a lot of Muslims, um, to my surprise, and um, many halal places, so I was very happy. But um, one thing that happened was my wife became not well um, So um, at the time last year and today still she's still not well so please if you can please make dua for her um, to, to get better because it's been a long long time so but at the time I was over there and I tried I was going to go for a deal and stay over there with my family but like I said my wife was here and she, she called me back because there's a lot of um, she needed me back to look after my three children that I have. So when I came back, I realized that I can't play at the moment. I can't go to training because I have the three kids to look after. And um, yeah, so from last year, let's say February, March till July, I thought, okay, that's it now. No more football. And I had a massive pain in my heart because I never, you know, the, the feeling of not playing football. I've been playing since the age of 17 up until 33. And to have an ending like this, it was, you know, it's, it's hard. 
because I turned on the, the TV the first day of the Premiership this season. I wasn't at a team. I wasn't at any club doing any training. And I realised this is probably it, you know, my last time. And obviously with no club means no income also. So that was where I was at a position where I thought, okay, what am I going to do next? And uh, alhamdulillah, I found, um, well, my cousin, um, Simeon's brother, he came to me with um, a business opportunity and which I've taken since then. And alhamdulillah, it's filled the void that I thought would never be filled. And um, it's, you know, I'm just very, very happy that Allah has replaced this football career with something else that can give me much more satisfaction because it involves helping so many people where so many people are crying out for help. I can help people now. And I, when I do help them, that satisfaction I have is very good being able to help people and obviously earn a living from doing that. So um, that's where I'm at today. And um, Alhamdulillah, you know, my, my, my journey to Islam and as a Muslim is growing and growing. And Allah has replaced the football with something better. So Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> it's always hard to, to, to stay away from temptations, that's what, you know, this life is a test, so, you know, if, the, if it was easy, then there would no, be no need for a test, so, you know, Allah's placed that in us, you know, to have hardship in life and, you know, try to overcome it, so I'm not different, I think everybody has the same kind of thing, where you have to, you know, you fight yourself and fight the shaitan who's telling you to do, you know, to do the things that he knows that are good for him, to, you know, for us to join his party. But Allah says, you know, you know, you follow his party and do what he says, and we'll be we'll be on his side. So um, it's a day-to-day -day struggle, as you know, and you just got to learn. The more you learn, what I would say is, the more I learned, meant the more iman I had and the more strength to stay away from the things. Um, that are, that are bad, that I, I gained. So what I would say is definitely, definitely, you need to learn more and you will implement more Islam into your life. If I, I love football, yeah, I love football. So if I had the chance to play football at a good club where it would benefit me and I'd be able to still benefit my family, then I'd love to be playing, you know. I never stopped loving football and, um, yeah, you know, I still play. I still play with my friends. Yeah, obviously, it's not the same as playing on the big stadiums with, with a lot of, of fans. So I do miss that a lot. But life goes on. Life is not just about football. So for me, I know that there's more to life than that, and I have much, many more years, inshallah, to you know, to live and 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 try to do good. I did in the night. So. <laughs> what was the first surah you you memorized when, when you became Muslim? And what was the first prayer? And how was you feeling feeling? Uh, okay, so um, the first surah I memorized, obviously Al Fatiha, but um, my favorite surah is An Najm. Um, that's my favorite surah. Um, I, I've learned maybe the, the 30th juz now, most of it. There's maybe uh, maybe four or five surahs that I don't know anymore. But when I first started learning, it was, you know, I that was one of the things that I, was, I had to do on my own, to be honest, because. It was maybe two years went by when I didn't pray and I didn't know how to pray. I remember I used to sit and pray with people and um, that was the one thing that I always wondered, what are they saying? You know, they put their finger out and they go, I was like, what's that? What, what, what are you saying? You know, and they said, look, you know, you, you're going to learn that. He knew that he couldn't teach me that in, you know, in, in, in just a sentence speaking. So I think he realized that that's a bit too much. So what I did is, I was a person who always went online and download, bought stuff on Amazon, on you know all these eBay and all that stuff. So I thought, how am I gonna learn? Okay, I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna buy a book <coughs> and a CD, and I'm gonna learn it like that. So when I got the CD, it was going very, very slowly in little parts. So what I did is I cut it and pasted it all together into a proper prayer, and did them all five prayers. I made one, two, three, four, five. And I listened to it with headphones on, and I prayed. And it was, and then I made it my voice. Okay. And then what happened was, 
every person that became Muslim, I gave them the CD and I said, look, this happened to me, it took me two years, I don't want it to happen to you. So I gave them, I copied off a CD and gave them a CD and a piece of paper. I said, look, put it in your head, in your earphones, listen to it until you memorize it. It will take you maybe just one week and then you'll be able to do it yourself. And um, yeah, that's what I did. And it was, it was amazing because learning the English to it, that's when it became really amazing, you know. You know what, what you're saying, not just saying the words in Arabic, you actually know what you're saying. That's when it, it hits home because, you know, I kind of, I say it in Arabic and then it's said in English while I'm thinking it in English, if you get what I mean. So that's the, the best part of it, to be honest. A lot of people that become Muslim, they always say before they become Muslim. Uh, they ask God to guide them, and then they become Muslims. The same situation happened to you. No, to be honest, I didn't actually ask God to Allah to guide me. I, I, obviously, I would, by doing that, I think my intentions were Allah to guide me. If you get know what I mean, so I didn't say it out loud, but my intention and Allah knows our intention. So I think definitely I was trying to find the truth between all of the false. So yeah, I think indirectly, you know. I think that was definitely something that was said inside my heart. Yeah. Who's the best player you played against? Who is the one player that you would like to play with, present and uh, one from the past? Okay, the best player I played against. I'm going with a defender, obviously, because I played against Cristiano Ronaldo before, so obviously he'd be the best player I've ever played on the same field with. But Sylvian Distan is the strongest defender, fast defender. When I was playing, I thought, I, whenever I used to play, I thought I could beat anybody when I got the ball at my feet. But then I tried to take him on, I couldn't take him on. I tried to strengthen him, I couldn't strengthen him. I tried to win a header, he's winning headers. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is amazing. So for me, this Sylvian Distan is one of the best defenders I've played against. As for the other question, who was I, would I like to play with currently? It's got to be Lionel Messi because he's an amazing team player and he's obviously as a team player he's the best team player in the world as a player individually and obviously Cristiano is the best so he would be someone but overall in history the real Ronaldo we all know who he is the Brazilian Ronaldo I believe is the best player ever definitely Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo is the best for me especially at the times when we have defenders that were so good and he's and he was just destroying them all. So, okay, go. Out of Pele as well, <laughs> because the level of defenders. If you watch the games, you see the players were just walking around, letting people run. They'd run the whole field before someone could get next to them. I'm not saying their ability wasn't good. What I'm saying is the defending wasn't nowhere near as good as it was when Ronaldo was playing, and we had the, the best defenders like. Maldini, Costa Curta, you had so many Italian defenders that they were the best in the world and he would just rip them apart on his own. So for me, Ronaldo. Yeah. Uh, what would you give uh, like young Muslim youths who want to pursue green sports as well as religion? You know, what kind of advice would you give? How would they kind of balance it out? I would say to a person who wants to pursue a sports career, you know, and, and, and play, how to balance it out is this. As for everything, in any career, you know, put Islam first. Always make sure that you make all your prayers. Make sure that you're learning something new every day, you know, because if you're not learning, you're going to just stay stagnant. You're not, gonna, you're not going to keep that, that, that level of Iman inside. So you have to also just make sure you have time management and that you don't ever compromise Islam for anything that you're going for. So if you, you want a job that you're not going to be able to do Friday prayers, then don't take the job or tell them you need to have Friday because that's your time, you need Friday. So for me, that's, that you have to always make sure that you do that because you do not want to get into a job where you believe, ah, oh, this is all that, this, this is going to help me. This is really going to help me, but you have to now, you know, not have your Friday prayers. There's no point in having a job, that job anyway. You know, if they're not going to allow you to have Friday prayers, there really is no point. So. That's really the, the main thing is prioritize Islam before anything else and then try to fit stuff around your, your at least, the very, very least, you have to have your five prayers at the right time and your Friday prayers. Then everything else you can fit in elsewhere. I was just going to ask you, um, you know, 
as you know, when you were learning about Islam and what you were seeing, sort of the picture of the Muslim community, how did you balance the two? And like some people got negative attitudes. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, when you see what Muslims are doing and what Islam is about, they're two different things. P people, they, you know, people in the world, when you speak to them, sometimes they, they think it's the same. It's not. Islam is the thing that's perfect, and we're the human beings trying to follow Islam. So you're going to have people who are not so good Muslims, people who come from a Muslim family, but they're not even Muslims at all anyway. You know, you, you have the, the good Muslims, the bad Muslims. Just like every religion, you have bad people and good people. So it's just as long as I realize that I realize that difference. You know, Islam is this, and and people are this. So when I used to have people say to me, "But you believe Islam is this good, but what about that Muslim? He's doing this." I'm like, "Yeah, but that's not Islam. That's a Muslim. You know, Islam is here." So you know, but so it really is important to make sure when people speak. They just get clear, they, they understand it's clear, they're two separate things and um, I think that's where what made me obviously make my decision about Islam. It's not about what the people are doing, it's about what Islam says and what the, the signs are that made me realise that this could have only come from you know, the one who created us and that if I believe that, he's already set a way of life for me that he wants me to follow and if you do these things and you try your best to do this way then you'll get to paradise inshallah. If you don't do them, once you already believe in your heart that this is from Allah, then you know where you're heading. You're, you, you've headed that way on purpose. So, you know, that's what I realized. And um, I try my best, obviously, um, to follow that way. And anything I do wrong, I ask Allah to forgive me for my shortcomings.